Now, back to Coastal Living on KZTV. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Coastal Living. Please welcome Kate Rodriguez and Malika Wiley here to talk about couples therapy. We're going to focus on the five love languages. Yes. Thanks for joining us today, ladies. Yeah, it's nice to have you absolutely. back. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy, Happy Valentine's Day to you as well. Y'all both look amazing. We got Juan in on this one. So technically, it's kind of our couples therapy, which is our oh, first wow. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. It does. Yeah. Pre consultation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, what are the five love languages for someone who's never heard of it before? So Dr. Gary Chapman came up with the five love languages which are physical touch, mm -hmm. quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and words of affirmation. Okay, awesome. And so how do those apply to our relationships? Are we selfish if we like one over the other? No, definitely not. What's important about the love languages is to know what works for the other person. Mm -hmm. So if you like receiving gifts, that's wonderful for you, but maybe your partner likes more acts of service. Mm -hmm. And so knowing what works for the other person helps you communicate how much you love each other more effectively. Okay. Absolutely. So it's good to know what yours is, but it's more important to know your partner so that you're able to deliver the love that they feel they need to receive. Right. Because oftentimes we love the way that we want to be yes. loved, right? So if someone's quality time, I like to say those whose love language is quality time, it's more about turning off and turning towards your mm -hmm. partner. Um, so sitting and watching Netflix is fun, but actually having a conversation with your partner is showing love. Mm -hmm. Where another partner receiving gifts, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Sometimes people are like, oh, receiving gifts. Mm -hmm. But it can be something as small as a flower, a handwritten note, mm -hmm. um, going into the store and getting someone a, a Pepsi. I know we like Coke <laughs> here, but um, <laughs> you know, getting someone a, a small treat. So. Awesome. And this doesn't just apply to love relationships. This applies to anything, right? So what about our single folks out there this Valentine's Day? How can they relate to a love language? Oh, still knowing what it is that the best way to love yourself so know what it is, <laughs> know what it's it is that works for you. And if you're single on Valentine's Day, spend today celebrating yourself because you need to love yourself before you can effectively love anybody else. Exactly. Yeah. And so spend today doing what it is that you love and what the way you enjoy your time by yourself because you're in your own company. Yeah. That's right. So what are your thoughts on love languages, babe? We've gone through this <laughs> once before at our wedding retreat. And we have very different love right. languages, but I think you're great at it. I think we've nailed it. I mean, uh, I'm the affectionate one. I'll always try to hold her hand or give her a massage, just randomly sit in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I know she likes gifts, so as small as they are, mm -hmm. I'll try to give her, you know, whatever right. I can. Whatever. So your love language is physical touch? Yes. Then, okay. yes. Do I yes. love language you well enough? Yes. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yes. Because if she doesn't ask for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right here, right here. Run my back, babe. But even like the small gesture of you taking the initiative to hold his hand. Right, so I'm that pretty sure something. he was like, oh my gosh, yeah. that yeah. really, yeah. So. And it's something we've grown and learned to do because I'm not a physically affectionate person mm -hmm. for some reason. It's not that I'm not sweet. It's just right. not a part of me to think sure. to do those things. So it's been a conversation in our relationship. Like, I want that from you. And so I make the effort to do just little things like this. I'm like, oh, you want you want mm -hmm. to hold my hand? Okay. Right. Yes, and being open about it. Don't be embarrassed for right. asking. Like, mm -hmm. if, if what you really want is more physical touch, be open about it and don't be embarrassed to say and to communicate what it is that you want. Well, because communication is key throughout like, the whole absolutely. relationship. Exactly. So, yeah. Absolutely. And some people don't like to ask for help or are ashamed at, at saying, like, you know, I'd really like some more <laughs> um, words of encouragement. Uh -huh. Right. Um, like mine is the affirmation. Like mm -hmm. I need someone to pump me up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Good job, babe. Yeah. Like way to go. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's what I need. It doesn't really know that sometimes until yeah. you say it. It's like, oh man. Right. Okay. Well, I'll start doing that. You know, yeah. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Definitely about communication because I think a lot of us something about how we grow up and you feel like you have to internalize feelings and it's not okay to share things that you think other people should know. Yes. And so when you finally let that out, whether it be some hostility that you have towards someone or you're talking about love languages or a weird quirk that bothers mm -hmm. you in a relationship, like just getting it out there is the hardest part. And then once you do it, you're like, oh, so we're, we're going to work that out and we're cool? Yeah. All right. You yeah. still love me? Great. <laughs> Yeah. And the biggest thing we were talking about too is also the stereotypes. Like men have to do this and women mm -hmm. have to do this. So kind of breaking away from right. those. Yeah. Um, and just really talking to your partner about like, hey, what is specific for you? Absolutely. So. And besides the love languages, what other advice do we have for couples? I know this time of the year can feel kind of pressured. Um, you're forced to express your love to somebody that you love all the time, not mm -hmm. just one day a year. So how do we cope around this time if we're struggling in our relationship and there's this pressure to love harder? 
I guess I would say managing expectations once. Mm -hmm. um, so this day is a really big day where we feel like we have to go out and do something. So if you're not in a great place, I would say take the quiz, see where you're at. Mm -hmm. There's a plethora of information out there for couples who are struggling, as well as having that honest communication of saying, hey, where are you at in our relationship? Even mm -hmm. a quick, from a scale one to five, five is the, we're doing great, one we're not, and comparing your numbers and yeah. making a game of it. Yeah, so. there you go. And know everything's gonna change. Yeah. That's what I was Everything gonna say next. Right. It's, it's never gonna be like an mm -hmm. up and steady situation, and life is a roller coaster. Love is a battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're in a bad place, I think today might be the day to just try. Right. Really try, you know, add it again, see if anything sparks up, and if it doesn't, okay, well. And you don't yeah. have to do the stereotypical, the the flowers and candy, if that's right. not what what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And I like the way Malika said it, like turn off and turn towards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And during those highs and lows in relationships, what advice do we have for our viewers? Um, because I think some of us kind of expect it, and especially when you're looking at everyone's highlight reel and everyone's so happy all the time, and why aren't we like that? What advice do we have for those people that are constantly going through those struggles? I think couples counseling is awesome. A lot of people think that that's what you do when things are like real bad. Mm -hmm. Couples counseling is great when things are even just a little bit bad or you feel like you need some help communicating. Mm -hmm. um, because with couples counseling, you have a different person there to listen that doesn't know anybody, mm -hmm that has to do with you, that somebody that's on the outside that can, we don't sit there and give you advice. We kind of yeah. help mediate and help y'all learn tools to communicate. Right. Yeah. And, so and that's connect at that deeper level, yeah. right? Yeah. Sure. So. Then some of us just, you don't think that way, so it takes a third party to sort of open that door for you and let you see things in a different perspective. Right. Yeah, we're actually about to start doing classes too cool. for big groups of couples because everybody needs help. Yes. Okay, let us know when that happens because I think that's yeah, a really we'll great back. idea. <laughs> yeah. And we'll go back to the love languages. Let's go over that again. Words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, receiving gifts, and physical touch. And when we did our... Um, our wedding retreat, our marriage retreat, they had us put those in order of importance. Right. So that right. might be a fun thing to do tonight with your partner. If you're out on your date, it's a fun conversation starter. Let's talk about love languages. Mm -hmm. And you can each kind of, like you said, play a little game and put them yes. in order and then talk about it and that'll take up the whole night, I promise. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And there's so many resources out there. Awesome. We want to know when you start that group couple oh, therapy because I think that would be really fun mm -hmm. for everyone. Thank you for joining us today, ladies. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, coming up on Coastal Living, it's a Coastal Living fishing line couples fishing trips when we return.